50 years ago, the bank was established as a symbol of genuine commitment to shared prosperity between Arab world and Africa. It is indeed heartwarming today to reaffirm this commitment and validate the vision set forth by our past leaders. Ghana plays host to the 50th anniversary celebration of the Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa as the Multilateral Development Bank marks the second phase of celebrations which commenced in Riyadh with a clear statement of pursuit towards sustainable development and impactful initiatives in sub-Saharan Africa. Hello there and welcome to this highlight on the Golden Jubilee celebration of the Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa. I'm David Alabi. An opening speech by the president of the bank highlights sustainability and social impact at the heart of Badia's priorities at this year's leaders' breakfast. As we celebrate today the 50th anniversary of the bank, we are really reflecting on a journey that began and was successful because of all of you, government, financial institutions in both the Arab world and in Africa. Second, this is a, a, a good opportunity for all of us to think about Badaya and to project Badaya in the next 50 years. And this is why we are currently working on the vision Badaya 2074. With a total capital base of $20 billion, the Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa has approved over 2,000 transactions worth $15 billion over its 50 years of operations. The board chair takes us on the memory lane into the evolution of the bank and how it culminates into the launch of the Arab Africa Financial Institutions Consortium. Badia has not only evolved to meet expectations of, of the continent and our shareholders, but also to demonstrated agility and responsiveness to meet development challenges from COVID-19 response to the common pledges of the Arab Coordination Group on food security, climate change, and resilient infrastructure. Today is also a special day as we feel honored and grateful to His Excellency President of Ghana the African Union champion of financial institution, who not only welcomed Badia's anniversary and hosted it in beautiful city of Accra, but also aimed in elevating the partnership and coordination of financial institutions to support Africa. With His Excellency called to create Africa Arab Financial Consortium following the successful launch of the African Financial Institution Network last Friday, I can confirm that Badia will spare no effort in ensuring this consortium succeeds in realizing the, the vision of Af Arab Africa Financial Institution collaboration and coordination for leverage and resources for the continent. Leverage in the power of partnerships is a resounding theme highlighting hallmarks such as the Arab Coordination Group pledge of $50 billion for Africa's development in November last year. The spotlight also dawns in partnerships with the African Development Bank, which have resulted in co-financing projects worth over $835 million from Madagascar to the Sahel. A call for increased cooperation between Africa and the Arab region is the hallmark of Ghana's president's message. As we look to the future, we must continue to prioritize infrastructure development with a focus on sustainable and reliable solutions. This includes investing in renewable energy, modern transportation networks, and digital infrastructure. By doing so, we can enhance our economic competitiveness, improve the quality of life for our people, and contribute to global efforts to, counter, to combat climate change. Our strategic partnership with Badia is bearing very good fruits. Since our most recent memorandum of understanding signed in 2017, 
we have worked together to co-finance project worth $835 million in nine countries to transform and uplift communities across nine African countries from Madagascar all the way to Sahel. Energy offers enormous opportunities for cooperation between the Gulf countries and Africa. Across GCC countries, significant investments have been made in renewable energy, especially solar, green hydrogen, for which enormous potential exists in Africa, which should be explored through joint investment partnerships. Strengthening and building resilient health systems, harnessing agricultural potential, and integrating peace, security, and development to foster sustainable development in post-conflict African states, we all have a critical role to play in driving Africa's development. The Arab-Africa Trade Bridge is a very important platform that will facilitate these flows of um, investments and foreign direct investments from the Arab countries into, into Africa. The UAE and Gulf countries in 2024 have actually surpassed Europe, USA, and China as major investments, investors in the African continent. A major highlight of the day is the recognition of contributions of Nkosa Zana Zuma towards Africa's Agenda 2063. She emerges the recipient of this year's Sankore Legend of Integration Award. Now, with accelerated implementation of the African continent of free trade area in focus, the 2023 Africa Export Competitiveness Report makes its debut analyzing market intelligence and incentives to scale offerings to drive intra-African trade and exchanges with the Arab region. It's a report that uh, uh, looks at, analyzes 30 countries, African countries, uh, and looking at their export cap competitiveness, their export capability. And uh, it analyzes that in several dimensions. Uh, one is uh, the enabling environment, the environmental readiness, which looks at your uh, policies, regulations, incentive systems, etc. Everything that enables uh, export. It also analyzes infrastructure readiness, uh, looking at uh, the ports, uh, the transportation, uh, uh, but also the soft infrastructure, your digital capability, payment capabilities, and all of that. And it looks at also private sector readiness. Uh, what is the capacity of the private sector to do also um, export? More engagements follow through with a high-level panel session on strategies to unlock more capital inflows. But we have more capital here than we're utilizing. Look, the Peruvian economist, Hernando de Soto, talks about the mystery of capital. And one of the real challenges of this continent is that we have not been able to create those so-called representational systems that allow you to use your assets, make them fungible and access cap capital and create wealth. So asset-based finance is very dangerous unless you have a standard project that's well uh, studied and that guaranteed of return. But if you have a new project with new idea, with new technology, that, that may make you very rich, like what happened in the United States, Germany, and Japan. On the other hand, it could lose, and you lose the money. So this kind of projects cannot be financed as asset-based finance. So this is actually the core of our collaboration, how we empower the African private sector to have trade, to have industrialization, and we have investment with this Afro-Arab collaboration because this investment will lead to industrialization. And without industrialization, we go nowhere, nowhere. With all the resources on the continent, we are making sure that we have a made in Africa products. 
And that's how we have to treat among each other. The management of the bank speak on the journey so far with the Badia 2030 strategy and what to expect in the 2074 agenda. Uh, we will be diversifying our operations. So historically, we focused more on infrastructure, and that was the historically what we focused on. What we started recently, private sector, trade finance, uh, uh, small and medium enterprises, oh, and we're very proud that we supported many small businesses across Africa as well, and, and that's very important. Um, as we are evolving, um, you will see more energy need, Renewable, finance, uh, renewable energy and also climate change impact on, on Africa, in addition to food security, which is very, very important for, for the region. So um, what we do every five years, we review our strategy because we want it to be um, uh, up to date to the needs of African countries as well. So um, this year we will be uh, updating our five-year strategy and we will announce it towards the, uh, the end of this year be, uh, with new innovative uh, also uh, products for the African continent. From the, the first inception, uh, Badia was uh, founded on the principle that we are led by the aspiration of, of the beneficiary countries. And uh, I think Africa has its own ambition until 2063, which is beyond the current framework of the SDGs. We realized that they are six years before the, the or less actually, uh, before we, the, we have the end of the 2030 agenda. So we are cognizant of the fact that there is still a lot to be achieved in Africa and uh, we will remain um, we, uh, with open hearts, I would say, and open ears to hear the orientation of uh, the policy makers, the partners and the beneficiary uh, leaders. In fact, today was an excellent opportunity to listen to some of that uh, critical orientation. The Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa draws the curtains on this year's out and to close reiterating the Niche International Development Finance Organization's readiness to take on challenges of decades to come and extend financing for ready infrastructure and bankable future projects. Well, this brings us to the end of this highlight of Badia's Golden Jubilee celebration in Accra, Ghana. Many thanks for watching. I'm David Alabi.